easy stuff. And then I, and then I realized not only is it not easy stuff, but really to understand the Mishnah to Sefta together, you have to know everything from, you know, uh, the beginning of Chazal, uh, really up until like the last Acharon, uh, whoever that may be. And, and I definitely don't know those people, all of them. So uh, you'll give me hopefully some leeway uh, as to how difficult this text actually can be. But with that, I wanted to kick it off. Actually, I wanted to read a paragraph from the Me'iri of Nachman and I were just arguing about this, but uh, um uh, I'll, I'll let him mainly win, but we'll do a little paragraph of it. Um, so I'll share my screen and um, hopefully maybe some people got a chance to see this. Um, the Me'iri in all of, for all Masechtot, uh, does this thing where he actually introduces them. Uh, he gives you like what each parak is about. He also gives you, if anyone's ever read his introduction, which I highly recommend, he gives you the whole like, curriculum of like, the medieval curriculum that they used to learn, what order of Masechtot they would learn and so forth and why. I uh, remember their world is a pre shulchan Aruch world, so they're learning all of this. This is how they learn halacha, is that they, they learn Gemara. So um, anyway, this is about the first parak of Baf Metzia. Can, I, I, maybe people didn't see this, but someone wanted to volunteer to, to read it. It's, the Hebrew is not so bad. Uh, so, Or am I going to volunteer somebody? Uh, I will volunteer. Lexi, you want to kick us off? Good person to kick off the year. So this first parak, um, it's going to kind of give us a basis um, to for beginning the Masechets, and it's going to mainly revolve around four primary topics. Harishon, the Ve'erbo Shnaim Shenechleklu B'Metzia, Eze Zachaba Metzila, uh, um, so the first issue is going to be to explain when two people are kind of disputing uh, a found object, um, who has the right to it, um, and like who or who initially right, who initially found it and therefore took ownership of it, and what is their yeah what is their dean how do we treat that case and in general when we have things that there is disputed ownership of. Uh, sorry, let me know if you want. Yeah, yeah. I did just, I want to add one thing. I think you may have said this, but right, this in, involves in particularly the case where the two of them have some sort of claim, some sort of chazaka, right? So, so we say, I, I know you may have said that, sorry if you did, but uh, to it, as opposed to the next inyan. That's, uh, some sort of thing where there is like a reason to presume that they both have a full claim to ownership. Beautiful. Uh, so the second is when there's only one person who's clearly like in possession of a thing, right? So the first one also, it's not only chazaka in the presumptive sense, but often referring to literally, as we'll see with Shnai Mochzin, physically holding on to things. Whereas here we're saying there's only one person who has kind of a clear physical chazaka at the very least, but there's another person who is making claims and saying that they have a uh, right to it. They're claiming that the other person took hold of this object on their behalf, right? And so really uh, it belongs to them. Uh, so the third um, is when it's very clear that there's a one particular person who took hold of an object, um, but this person is claiming that they have a right to it because the person who found it is someone who is under their domain or control, like their minor children or their wife or their slave, uh, their Canaanite slave. Um, so the fourth is when somebody finds something that they could not gain any benefit from, um, but returning it to people would be a benefit to one person and to the detriment of another. A uh, classic example of this is when you find like a star halva a, right? So when you have a document of like a loan, uh, that could be very, if you give it back to the lender, then they could potentially reclaim an own, a loan that maybe was already paid. Uh, so it's to their benefit, to the detriment of the borrower. Um, so in what cases slash do we return that? 
Um, as I was sure, I should Derek Cloud. Actually, we could we could stop there because the rest is just going to be. And there's other stuff, of course, the Gamara includes because that's the way of the Gamara. The George Shapiro, Derek Cloud, Elishiavo, Otbo, Harpeti, Nin, Algade, Gil, Nin, Elo, Kin, Yan, so get the Talmud, Kamosha Kadam, Vel, Derek Shapiro. It's like these are the main topics, but we'll get some other stuff in there because, you know, the Gamara just kind of picks up other topics and wraps them in. That's how it goes. Great. So, so just if I could summarize that again, right, the Mira claims that the four topics are one is when two people have a chazak on things and they're disputing that each other, uh, who actually owns it. The second is when one person has a chazak, but another person is challenging that chazak, right? The third is when somebody it gets ownership of something through somebody who is subservient to them, let's say, or under their domain. Uh, and the fourth is when you have a docu or something that itself isn't the object, but rather something that gives people rights to things like a document. And the question is, who do I return it to? All right. Um, so is, is that any thoughts or questions on that before I, I move on uh, from there? I just want to, um, but, uh, okay. Anybody, anybody dispute, you know, you've all, I mean, obviously, maybe not everyone's read all of the Gemara, but people have read the Mishnah, I, I assume here, at least at this point. Any dispute with the Miri's claim of that these are the four topics? Anything you would add or subtract? Is Rav Nachman's dispute with bringing this in? The oh, no, 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 no. It was just a question of time. That was a pedagogical question, not a, uh, not a, a question of dispute of the Miri's claim. So... But uh, okay, I, I I'm pretty personally pretty satisfied. I I like the Meiri. I like particularly in this case that he. I I happen to think, and I think the Tosefta makes this almost even more clear that the piece at the end, which is not not just the end, it's like a whole bunch of stuff about Shtarot, right? That uh, that occurs in this chapter feels a little bit off in some ways, right? It's like, when we're talking about like, you find an actual object to finding something that is a written document, you know, guaranteeing things feels like a different category. And I think he's actually nicely connected it and woven it in here, which I think is important. Uh, and I think it's an important part of this chapter uh, is that, you know, a star is not just a piece of paper, of course, it gives people rights to things. And when you find one, it's an interesting question of like, to, to whom do you give it? Um, and, and, the rep and, and the ramifications, right? If you give it to the wrong person. Um, so, or even as we're going to see the ability of the two parties who may want one owes the other to actually maybe come together and conspire to use that document to take property from other people, right? Uh, which I, I believe it was, the term is uh, hinonia, right? Uh, in uh, that the Gemara uses. I don't think the Mishnah ever uses that term, but uh, that the Gemara uses. So, but uh, um, okay, good. Um, in, in a sense, it's really a, it's all a question of 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 ownership. Decisions. In other words, the Metsiya is a Metsiya. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not something that was with a Siman or something. It's definitely a Metsiya. And then there's just a, different kinds of Machlokas about who is, to whom it is Shayach, to whom it, which is an interesting yeah. way to summarize the whole thing together. Good. And that's actually, I think, and also an important point there, too, is even though uh, really the first two chapters of Bav Metsiya are about uh, Bava Mitzi'a or Bava Mitzi'ot, uh, I won't get it right, but, uh, you know, um, it is that coming in, interlaced in there are going to be a lot of topics about ownership in general, even if it's not a found thing. And in fact, right, the, what, the very, is it the first, it's the first Gemara, it's going to deal with the whole thing of, well, actually, maybe our mission is not just about finding objects, but also about Mecca Humemkar, right? Uh, you know, like a dispute of, well, we both paid this guy to, to sell us this object, and we actually, we're both claiming that, that we, he owes it to us. So, um, so it's not, even though it's, you know, on the surface is about finding stuff. Uh, below it, we can actually make comparisons between finding lost objects to lots of other cases. So, um, okay, good. Um, I wanted to, I have another question, if that's okay, unless there are uh, positive, there are any questions from what I've said so far. So, and don't worry, we'll get into reading in a minute. I have a question about the, just a general question about the first chapter. Who is the first chapter for? Who's supposed to be reading this chapter when you read it? Uh, and I, and I'll, I'll just I'll to tighten that to make it not and this may be so obvious, but if you guys know the second chapter was a very classic chapter of Bav Metzia that studied a, a lot as like an intro Gemara chapter. I think that chapter is written for a different group of people um, than the first chapter is. Yavni seems to be directed at like adjudicators. Good. What do we call the what do we call that in, in you know? Uh, 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 Rabbi. Beitin. 
Beitin. Yeah, Dayani and Beitin, right? This is not a case, right? Yavni and I are arguing over a talit, right? It's not the case that the two of us are like, oh, well, Bava Metziah, the first chapter says, this is what we should do. We should take a shua in front of nobody and uh, and we're done, right? This is clearly something that's being brought to court. Uh, maybe not every single case, but a lot of these cases at least seem to be uh, for Dayanim. As opposed to, what's, who's the second chapter for? Some might some might have find a uh, normal person who yeah. finds a lost object. Exactly right. This is right. The second chapter is you know I find a lost object and do I get to keep it or do I have to go make some sort of hachaza uh, that I found this lost object or, you know or even cases of I found a lost object and I need to, I have choices of you know do I return it to this person first or that person first I found two lost objects you know cases like that right it's um, it's almost a little bit more ritual law than it is you know, it's not I wouldn't call it ritual law but you know something a little bit more leading that way. Uh, than this chapter is in some ways. So, okay, good. Any other thoughts or comments on that before we actually dive into the text itself? Jill, I would just add, even though I agree this is predominantly written for judges, yeah. mm -hmm. there is a, an aspect of it that that ordinary Joe in the street would need to know, right? So if, if the SV is running through my fields, uh, it's it's going to be important to me to, to me to, to have the knowledge in the back of my mind. Okay, if it's if it's just dashing through, this 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 actually won't help me. Or if I get into a rough house with the guy in the street over a talit, um, that may or may not uh, be be practically useful for me. Beautiful, right? It's um, Ed, uh, Josie. I'll say, let's go to Josie first before we. Uh... There's also a practical notion of I find something. It's got somebody's name on it, and. It's a it's a bill of loan. It's it's a it's a mortgage note. It's a get. You know what am I supposed to do with this? Oh, it's got it, it's got you know Ruben. It, it's it's Ruben's loan to Shimo, and I'll just return it to Ruben. Well, that can be a big problem. Good. In fact, like the end of the chapter may in some ways already be moving into that thing of not for the Dianim to decide, but really for me to decide if I find this document, do I return it or do I just leave it until, you know, Asher or, or or something like that. Um, Asher, I saw your hands, and uh, so was Asher. Yeah, and the one thing I just wanted to say, I find this especially interesting with the second chapter, which I I had the opportunity to teach last year to eighth grade at the at the school here in Muldaen. Mm -hmm. A lot of it moves away from the letter of the law and what are you supposed to do, and more into the spirit of just what's the right thing to do, which I find I, I found very unusual and very refreshing for a for a Masechet. Good, right? Lifni Mishrat Adin, if people are familiar with that, right, shows up uh, in the second chapter. It's not the only place it shows. It shows, I think, only in Bava Metzia, maybe one other place, if I remember correctly. But um, right. I, I know, know it's a rare thing. It's, it's probably not exclusively yeah. here, but it's very rare. And I, I liked, I, I thought it was very interesting to see that aspect of things. Mm -hmm. So great, right? So this idea of maybe um, super erogatory, is that the right word? Uh, did, I, did I, yeah. Uh, um, but, uh, Good. Uh, did, and I, saw, I thought I may have saw one more hand before we, we dive in here. Okay, let's start it out. So let's uh, let's learn some Mishnah. Uh, and we'll learn the Tosefta in comparison to it a little bit, see how it compares. Um, of course, I lost my screen here. So um, people will give me one second. There we go. Um, Can I say one more thing while we're... Of course. Yes, yeah, Sarah, please. No, oh, I, I mean, maybe this is getting ahead of ourselves, but I actually wonder whether the... There was a part of me that thought that the Tosefta was kind of less Beit Din oriented, except for then than the Mishnah was, but then, or like less written for the Beit Din. But then there were these moments where like these legal principles that I think of as, I thought of as later until I sort of like saw it on the page in front of me pop up, right? So you get um you get like Asarsha Hitir, like these kind of general rules. And that does seem very like judicial um, Good. in a different yeah. kind of way than the way that the Mishnah seems to be written for the Beitin. So it's like they're both written for the Beitin, but they're written like differently for the Beitin, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, I was wondering if someone was gonna gonna bring up that maybe the Tosefta is not the same here. That's part of our goal, right? Is to see if the Tosefta has a different uh, piece. So I think you've, you've hit it on the jackpot at this point. I think I've just mixed metaphors, but that's okay. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the Tosefta also, number one does, I, I think you're right, feels, we'll see if we, we agree, but it feels to me a little bit less for the Beit team, but also it does have 
um, general klalot, I would say, that we don't see in the Mishnah in the same way. A lot of this is going to also depend, maybe this is a good time to bring this in. You know, classically, the Tosefta is written kind of post-Mishnah, but it's, of course, a lot of the material is pre-Mishnahic material, right? But in the, in the academic world, they argue back and forth, as far as I know about, is the Tosefta after the Mishnah, before the Mishnah, stand alone from the Mishnah, responding to the Mishnah, all that. But I think that's something we're going to see here is questions of like, how does the Tosefta read on its own versus how does it read in light of the Mishnah? And how do those two things kind of um, influence us? Raphael? Please. It, just com, uh, building on Sarah's point, I think that if you specifically take Alacha Aleph and compare it to a uh, Mishnah Aleph, and we'll, uh, I think that the question is less here about is it Beidin oriented or not? I think it's still Beidin oriented, but I think that if we speak about legal concepts, uh, about uh, like Alachic theory, as Rav Landis likes, likes to say, I think that the Tosefta does show, especially in Alacha Aleph, where it's almost like a an alternative Mishnah, like an alternative Mishnah to open Bab Metzia with, it, it speaks about a Chazaka that is much more, uh, as Lexi said in the beginning, much more physical. Uh, and our Mishnah is very, I don't know, it feels almost an aversion to it. Because like, we're speaking about Ochazim Betalit, and we suddenly forget that they're actually holding it. We're speaking about only claims. And it seems as if our, if our Mishnah is speaking more about truth, <laughs> or about claims as a, an aim, uh, like a, as a concept, where where the Tosefta and in a lot of other places during this period, the Tosefta is thinking about a, about Baalut or about Ochachat Baalut. There's something that can is much more attached to a reality. That I like. It's clear that also how do other Gemarot quote this Tosefta as a Braita that like we we actually accept the narrative of the Mishnah, this narrative mm -hmm. of claims, but not rather this narrative of having hold of something. Um, that's just a thought, but like. Uh, I, I feel that like uh, there are two different type of Ba'ati Dinim. It's one more, let's say, primitive Beidin that the Sefta represents, a Beidin that it's much more interested. Let's see it just a second. How are people holding the things? Like how much claim do they have physically have to, to a certain thing? And the, and the Mishnah is already thinking about more, much more abstract concepts of, um, like at least it's, uh, and it's like uh, and it's retif. The Tosefta has places where it like enters with the Mishnah, like uh, especially Alachabet. It simply like complete, co begins already assuming the Mishnah, the our first Mishnah. So like uh, it's a bit complicated. <laughs> as most well, yeah, we'll, we'll read it. Uh, Isaac, go for it. Uh... Yeah, I mean, you bring up Alachabet, which I think really pushes. The Tosefta more towards this idea of like abstract concepts because the minute you get into that math, right? I'm sure we'll talk about this, but the minute you get into that math, you're no longer dealing with like simple fractions because they play fast and loose with everything. Um, and so I think even even if you say that the first halacha is a more sort of like hands-on, literally um, approach, like. You, you are getting to that abstraction quite quickly. And I, I'm i not sure necessarily that I would see Halakha Aleph as, see, as seeming like an earlier perspective, right? Um, mm -hmm. And I, I question the notion that the Tosefta is earlier than the Mishnah. I'm not sure that that's really true. Um, and this is why several scholars literally will not speak to each other, but that's okay. Um, yeah, I don't think we're here today to prove for fruit yeah. either one of those two. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah. all, it's all, you know, it's all literature that sits out there in the in the world of the Tanaim and then and then taken by the Amoraim that I think is important to kind of how we integrate all of them together. Whether or not one comes before the other, I think is a very interesting question that we should ask, but it's not the main basis of what we're doing here either. It's a great point. So I and I, and I, I wouldn't I, just even if yeah. irrespective of the relative dating of the Decepta and the Mishnah, I wouldn't necessarily see and like this is practical for, you know, sort of a hands-on approach on still intended versus a more abstract Beitin approach because in the Tosef, in the mission itself, right, we have Perak Aleph and Perak Beit doing those two different things. Good. Um, so. so, actually, just with that, I want to jump in a, a, um, a little bit. In the first Mishnah, which I, I, we have up here versus that first Tosefta, what is the first Tosefta miss? I mean, you know, Raphael, you and Sarah was really implying this to us, right? It, was, it talks about, you know, literally how much are you grabbing, right? Makom Shetafus, right? Natal Ad Makom Shetafus. But what's missing in the Tosefta that the Mishnah has a lot of? The Shavuot. I think. Good. 
Yes, and even more than the the Schwartz, and Schwartz is actually part of I think a larger thing that it's missing, right? Um, I'm in particular, well, like the fractions of how much they're actually grabbing or saying they own. Good. Yes. Wait, doesn't so, that just come in in the second? Uh, it, 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 when it says Kulashili and this one says what uh, Shlishili or whatever it is, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, uh, um, yeah. No, Yeshiva. I was actually thinking. I was thinking something more. I'm trying to push us even more. I think. Uh, we found sorry, it. Sorry, found it. Good. Uh, um, great. Uh, you're right. There. It's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. Was it Josie who said that? Um, um, I didn't think about the fact that yeah, but I think all of this actually goes to something even greater. I, I may be overly influenced by the Tiferet Yisrael here uh, and something it, that he it says. It seems like the, the Mishnah is also focusing on when they both have an equal claim, whereas the Good. Shefta focuses on, well, that's only if they have an equal claim, but if they don't have an equal claim, then one has to bring proof. And there's no, there's no discussion in the Mishnah about the need to bring proof if you're making a claim, but you're not actually holding it. Good. I, I, I actually, that's a great point. I wasn't what I was looking for. But it's a great point. I, this is like one of those hard pedagogical things where you want to push people a certain way. I think procedurally, the Mishnah is much more detailed, right, than the Tosefta, right? I just I want to read this. It maybe right. Actually, someone actually, let's have someone read the first Mishnah, and I wanted to see how it sounds versus um, Rabbi, uh, Rabbi uh, Eliezer. Go for it. All right. Sure. Eliezer's point. Shnayim ochazin betalid. Zomer ani metzatia vezomer ani metzatia. Good. No, I think I, unless anybody needs any clarification, I think we're good. But I just want to, right? I just want to, you, you read it so well, right? Zeomer, the Zeomer, right? Zeishava, the Zeishava, right? Um, um, you know, as opposed to like the Tosefta, right? If you look at Halacha Bet and the Tosefta, Homer, uh, actually, it doesn't even really, uh, no, but it just doesn't feel, right? There's not the, this, the back and forth of like, you almost imagine, the way I imagine it, you can tell me if you think I'm wrong. Someone, you know, the, the court opened the book is like, well, how do we deal with these cases? Okay, I want you to tell me how much you think is yours. Kulashili, how much do you think is yours? Kulashili, how much, okay, I want you now to swear that you have no less than this. I want you now to swear, right? It's like, it's like a step-by-step -step of what each person says in order to properly adjudicate this course, court case, as opposed to the Tosefta, which really, I think, doesn't get into the step-by-step -step piece. Now, the Gemara, of course, is going to be like, well, why do you need all of this? And then try to make something out of it. But I think already there's a, there's a sense here of like, yeah, there's a procedure to how to, how to you know, once this case comes to court as to how we, we proceed with it. So. Just, just, yeah, to it, it. just to throw it out there, Joe, the theory I heard from, from Rev Eitan is that this chapter is a perfect example of uh, memorization, right? The, the, the Tosefta has been, it's smoothed out. It's like uh, we can hear the, the rhythmic cadence to it. And it actually just it makes it way easier to, to recite and to flow. Good. That kind of knocks, I like it and it kind of knocks down what I'm claiming. It's not just about procedure, it's just that it's an easy way to memorize. And if anyone has, and you should, uh, I'm going to say that. I, I can teach you and I can say this. You should memorize Mishnayot. You should memorize this, all the Mishnayot in this chapter. Um, I'm working on it. I'm not done yet. But um, is you'll see that actually, yeah, when you, if you remember, well, there's two parties and each one has to say the same thing. It makes it much easier to recite out loud and has a nice cadence to it. Um, can, I, can, as, can I propose something? Um, please. Just an idea. Uh, it seems to me that in this particular case, and I don't, I'm not saying anything about the Tosefta in general, that it really is a Tosefta on what the Mishnah is saying. In other words, it's adding in, it's almost like the authors uh, are adding in two more details that we didn't get. Um, I mean, you could argue that Chelek Bet is, is um, already there, but maybe not. It, it's a different cloud a little bit, I think. But Chelek Aleph is almost like something you have to add in before the Mishnah. And and, Chelik, and, and Halakha Bet here is really something after Mishnah Aleph almost. It's almost right. like it's just additional details. That's what I, and not and not competing and not competing with what is said in the Mishnah. It's not an alternate version, I don't think. But maybe but Yeah, I, I think Halakha Bet is is saying is essentially helping you understand the the mechanism that that underplays uh, the the halacha in the Mishnah. I, I think I agree like, with you. I think I agree. Yeah, with you. yeah right. I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah, you know, I think that's really a great statement in terms of you know the from the Mishnah. I would like I have the case of one one claims kulashili and one 
one claim is Chetziashili, right? But I'm like, well, how do, what if there are other competing claims? What if there's different claims? What if one says, you know, Kulan, one says one eighth or, you know, whatever, maybe the mission, of course, brings one third. Or the mm -hmm. And so that helps clarify the mission for sure as to like, okay, well, That's how awesome. do we do the mathematics of this? You go ahead, please. That's also something that it's clear for me that it, that the Alchabet is literally a commentary over the first Mishnah, as as when Alacha Aleph is simple, is simply an alternative Mishnah. Meaning there are really two uh, levels of narrative that the Tosefta is playing on. Exactly like Alacha Gima simply continues on this other narrative, more, this more physical narrative that Sarah and I were speaking about. They're like uh, they don't have a lot to do again with Alacha Bet as it's in its uh, explanatory nature. Uh, nature to the Mishnah, meaning that this is that he's really a, an amalgamation of, of material in some sort of Good. Episode. Yeah, no, I, I definitely see that. And um, um, and I think, yeah, I think we're, we'll look at it in a minute, but Mishnah Bet and Halacha Gimel is a similar thing of either, it could be that the Tosef is a little bit holek on the Mishnah, or it could be that it's actually giving a little bit more kind of details of when is, is riding on an, on an animal versus when is leading an animal um, you know, uh, good enough to do a Kenyan uh, on, on that animal, for instance. Um, yeah, and so it could just be an addition of details and not actually a, a, a dispute with the Mishnah. So um, good. I just want to scroll through to see if anyone's raising their hand here. Um, okay, good. Uh, the other thing I wanted to, we should actually read Halacha Aleph in the Tosefta, I think, especially considering if Sarah brought this up, right, is it has a very important principle that I think probably, you know, uh, most people know. Uh, if you don't, now you know it. Uh, but it's like such an interesting principle. And, and like, how does, we'll have to ask, how does that interact with everything we're doing here? So maybe someone read Halacha Allah from the Tosefta. Um, I know Eliezer, I cut you off. I only had to read half the Mishnah, but I think I think for the moment we're, we're okay on that. We won't necessarily read everything here. Um, someone read Halacha Allah? I can read. Go for it. Jacob, please. Snaim Ochazin Batalat Zenotel Ad Makom said, First, the Zen Hotel Ad Makom said first. The Medvarm Amurim, his man shall you name to Zen Ba. About him, Haita Biado shall Achad Mehan Hamosi Mikhavero Allah Haraya. So, yeah, two people, two people are grabbing onto the talent. This one grabs until the point where he's grabbing. Um, this one is grabbing to the point where he's grabbed. I, it's not grabbing. I think Notel is like, they get to keep, right? That one is- Oh, like, they I, okay. Yeah, if I'm holding a talit, right? And I've got a certain yeah. portion of it, that part we, we assume is mine, right? Mm -hmm. I, the way that they, right? Anan Sahade, the Beitin looks at it, it's like, well, obviously I have good testimony that this person owns, you know, like at least has a chazaka, but owning that much of it, right? Up until now. Right. Um, but- Okay, uh, that makes a lot um, more sense. Um, and- what are we talking about? The time that they're both holding on to it. Um, but if it was only in the hand of one of them, then what someone who wants to take something from his friend has to bring a proof. Good, right? This is the shift to, to, to the second inyan that the Meiri brings up that will show up in the Mishnah and in the Gemara is, right, mm -hmm. we're studying of the case that both of them seem to have a good equal claim to it. We're going to, if you don't have that, then, you know, I don't care how many, you know, how loud you scream, if you're trying to take somebody that somebody else physically has, right, physically having something is important, then you have to bring the proof, right? It's on, you're the burden of proof is on you um, uh, in order to prove that, to take it away from that other person. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting, right, that Tosef, and this kind of plays into what we're doing, it leaves out, right? Well, what about the parts that they're not holding, right? Is Tafus, right? Does that mean, like, you know, just as far as your hand? reaches or in the in the original saying is like yeah you get the whole half you know uh, or is it you have to know the mishnah but the rest of it you take the shua which is how they, i believe the gemara is going to understand it so um, also i've just been wondering you know with, with talks of different fractions of it and stuff like that i'm assuming it's like the idea that you sell it and then you get the value of that maybe yes yeah, yeah i just wanted to clarify yeah, this is going to be the whole case. It is that um, it's the, the the you know it's a group, really important halachic point, right? You could, and this will be halachic point throughout Bavel Metzia, if I remember, you know, that I've seen is that right in certain things when you can give something, you steal something, or you could you know you, you find something. Ideally, you want to give back the original object, 
uh, right? This is what leads into the whole takanash vuyim, right? The, the whole, that if I, if I steal a beam from you and I build a house out of it, we don't make me give back the beam as a way to like get me to give things back, right? But ideally I'd give back that beam that I stole from you. Um, and, um, but in cases where you can't do that, of course you, you sell it and you, you give the, um, the value of it. So, um, which is, is, uh, yeah, obviously what you have to do, nobody can, I think the Gemara covers that at some point. I can't remember where, uh, maybe somebody else remembers, but, um, you can't, you know, half a talit probably isn't worth so much to me unless maybe it's just enough to like, you know, be a shawl or, you know, cover me or a scarf or something, you know, but, uh, it probably loses value in that sense. Um, but, uh, as opposed to like, we find a dozen eggs and we both claim them. Well, okay. That's, that's pretty easy. You can, you know, I can take six of them and you can take six of them. So, but, uh, good. Um, let's see. Um, oh yeah. Uh, there's two, one other point I want to look at halacha. So halacha Aleph had that really important, incredibly important point. Um, halacha bet also, I think has a really good clue. Um, and so maybe somebody, uh, wants to actually just, he calls it clue. Um, but uh, um, someone, someone read out halacha bet for us, so we can just see that and see the whole thing in its glory. Uh... I can read. Please go for it, Alan. Over the test after. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, so this Good. is the case of one one saying it's all, all of uh, the all of it belongs to them, one says the third belongs to them. Um so what the one takes a, a an oath of uh, five sixth, no less than five sixth, and the other takes uh, an oath of, of one sixth. And the general rule is you should only swear to half of what you're claiming is yours. Exactly. Why? Um, this and it allows that neither of the oaths is necessarily false, right? It is possible that both of these statements technically could be true. Good, right? We're getting into like an important thing of shua, right? Here, shua is right on one hand. If I understand this correctly, people can correct me. Right? On one hand, we want a shua is like a semi deterrent, right? We want people to like be able to you know, if you're taking Hashem's name, you have to actually really mean it. And so you have to say something that you, even if like you think that but you own the whole thing, you're like, well, maybe you have some doubts. Like, all right, I'm going to push myself to like, what claim can I actually make to this, you know, with God's name in it. On the other hand, we also don't want people to falsely, falsely swear. Uh, and we're afraid of that, you know, like causing people to falsely swear in court. And so we want to kind of limit how much we're going to have them swear to. Um, okay. Yeah, go for it, please. Yeah. Can I add a, uh, just a nuance in that? I think that, yeah, that, both of these oaths, are, even with the modification, are still necessarily false, right? The person who says it's all mine is it is well, no less than five sixths of mine. It's not false, but it's, it is it, as somewhat of a misrepresentation. It feels like the concern to me is that if two people take a shvua which are contradictory, then we're creating mm -hmm. a situation in which someone has Good. someone is taking God's name in vain. So it's it's, it's less about what each person is saying and more about the, the combination that makes clear to the public that uh, a, a, a desecration has taken place. Yeah, Lexi, go for it. Well, yeah, that's why the wording is very specific, right? That obviously, yes, you can say that there's something that still feels like a get around in it because it is, it is a get around, right? It's trying to, as Joel said, trying to negotiate the tension between like, we want something that is a deterrent to people just like, randomly snatching at things other people have found and on the other hand like we want to ensure that people who genuinely do have equal ownership um that we aren't yeah that we aren't cheating one person out and so we have the no less than a half means that they're not fun like again as you said they're not telling what they think is the entire truth but it is a truth in that they don't believe they have a right to less than half and because they're both saying that, right? Because both of them are technically not lying because they are not saying I have a right to only half. They're saying I have a right to at least half of this. Then the oaths don't cancel out, right? Again, you can say that like it is a get around and there are ways if you like the no less than half that the logical extension of that is, oh, I maybe own more than half. But like 
the the wording is very precise so as to actually avoid those canceling each other out. Good. What? Uh, no, I really appreciate that. That's. Uh, I heard somebody else. I think I heard. Yeah, I, I have a comment a, there. Have, yeah, based on what Alan said. Based on what Alan said, I've had um, I have a question. Alan said that. Well, I think one of the things he said was that, you know, it's not realistic that this could be that you would that you'd have a half, and uh, a third, and a th you know of a thing. Or maybe I think he said something like that. But regardless, my question is, what essential word is missing from the Tosefta that's in the Mishnah? In this, in the if in in Joel's juxtaposition of Mishnah Aleph with Allah Aleph and Beth, there's a there's a key word missing in the Tosefta. Yachloku. Um. Okay, another one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> another one. No tell. No, no tell. Well, no tell is over here in the Tosefta. It's a no tell. Uh, ah, but it's no, not in the no, Mishnah. No, no, the other one. It's missing from the Tosefta. We're all assuming that he found this item. Mitzatia. Uh, Mitzatia. Uh, yeah, oh, what Josie brought it's actually, Exactly, Mitzatia. It doesn't actually say that this is a case of finding at all. And once we, and it could, because actually the Gemara goes on to say that, this, that these dinim could be the same with Mechek mm -hmm. Um So actually the Tosefta is not only talking about Mitzil, it's talking about in general, um, any situation in which there is a argument about the, about joint ownership or different claims of ownership. So it could be quite legitimate that a person would say he owns a third of the talus mm -hmm. because he bought it in Shutafut, you know, with three people and and two of and one of them sold it to the other. So he has two thirds and one third is still mine. And it, it, it is as a purchase, it could be that he owns a third. And so it could be a reality. Again, it could be a reality that he really does own a third, the other one owns two thirds. Because we're not talking because it's again, it's hard to imagine it that like three people grabbed it and he's at the same moment. I mean, like, it's also possible, but but it's um, more reasonable when we're talking about things that are bought. And then, like I said, this the Tosefta is not talking about necessarily. I mean, unless we take it as a as an addition to or a uh, a uh, like a, a duet, a, a, you know, a song, a, a duet with the Mishnah, but it, taken independently, it certainly could be talking about any case where there's a machloka. I think good. that's a good point. Yeah. Notice that there's no mitzi, there's no ani mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a, uh, Isaac, please. A... Yeah. So I, I still have a problem with um, the the vows, um, which is so they both are making a claim on the sali, both in the Tosefta and the Mishnah, and then they both make vows that they are entitled to no less than. Um, something that is less than what they originally claimed. Mm -hmm. And I guess I don't understand why they're effectively seeding the point that it is possible that they're not owed the entirety of what they what they want. In other words, so in the mission of the two people who say it's entirely mine, and then they say like, oh, well, at least half of it. And then also in the Tosefta, the guy who says all of it's mine, and he says than no less than five, six. Like that doesn't, why is there no option to say, actually, no, I still hold that the whole thing is mine. Like, uh, why Why are you trying to take it from me? I don't I don't buy this. Yeah, I mean, that actually becomes, right, a case in the Tosefta, right? Where, where, where's the, uh, I have to find language. Um, so, no, anybody remember where it is? Uh, where two people, where is it? What's the, the language that's, that's used? Um, Anybody remember where I at, where that is? Uh, I'll, we'll find it. Uh, Lexi, go for it. I mean, the short answer is that, like, if the this is a scenario where neither one has, which again, definitionally, we're dealing with a scenario where neither one has greater proof to their claim than the other, then your options are like, you could stick to your guns and say, I refuse to compromise and- Joel, it's a uh. Thank you, thank you, yeah, go for it. So, If you don't, you're not gonna get anything, right? Because in the meantime, like they're not, the court isn't going to just give you the entire thing as you say the whole thing is yours while there is somebody else still claiming that it is theirs. 
right? And so you can either make this compromise, right? And do the whole shvua that you own no less than half, or you can get nothing. Well, yeah, but that doesn't bring in any form of like what sort of proof is there because, um, I mean, we've seen uh, it in that only one person is holding it, right? The person who wants to take it away, they have to bring proof. But if you like, once you ex abstract that and you're no longer physically holding the tali, like, where like where does proof come into this such that like can i really like every time someone has a house can i just walk up and be like no i own that house that's my house well, but Even though I don't first off karka is a whole different thing i don't want to go with, with into that okay. in the first Forget place karka. but but Maybe yeah, yeah it's a car no. not a car like no, you know oh, this is my car like i have no proof like now i'm owed part of this car like no where's the proof Great. Well, so good. So Aiden, we're going to be part of this, right? A huge part of this. If you have people who can come and say, well, wait a second, you know, I, I've, I have proof that I've seen that this is Joel's car or have even can prove a Hazaka on it stronger than the other person. That's a whole different story right here. This is a case, but I think you bring up a great point. No, but they're both, they're both holding it. I don't understand. They're both holding it. No, that's the whole point. Well, we're they not have, that's what the Miri said. They're Muhzakim in the, in the item. They have some physical or legal claim to it. They're not just words. Words are nothing. Good, which will be a, an important point. Sorry. Uh, well, but, like, but uh, even holding yeah. it, I think, especially if we're not saying we found it, right? Even holding it doesn't really. No, it does. You know, make sense. Well, so 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 let's say Joel's filling up his tank at the gas station, and he doesn't lock his his driver's seat uh, side door, and I slip into the car, and they say, "Well, I'm sitting in this car, and now it's mine." And Joel says, well, it was, I was just driving it. And yeah, well, if you came to bake in and one person what? is sitting in the car and the other person is holding the gas and they came to the baked in, then he, and he really claimed that he owned it then. And there was no proof and they can have no driver's registration of the car or whatever. Then really he would have a claim. Yes. But I mean, we, hopefully those so, things don't happen. Well, but, but, but possession is nine tenths of the law. Yeah. No, good. I, I think this is sorry, Alan. I, I saw you. Isaac, you're assuming you're witnessing the event. You have to take this yeah. from the perspective of the Dianim. Two people show up to the Beit Din. How are you supposed to know? Yeah, one guy's in the driver's seat, and the other guy, right. you know, is right. walked but, in with the hose. See, but two two people show up to the Beit Din, but in the absence of proof, I'm supposed to assume that like the. Well, 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 I'm yeah, supposed, exactly. I'm supposed to assume uh, uh, say each of you takes a uh, takes an oath. To like that, like at least part of it is yours. Like that doesn't add up. Where's the proof? Like no, I don't that's see only it. when they there's both have the proof in the first halachah the tosefta, but there's no discussion of proof. Like other than they're both holding it. So how can I say you're both going to take an oath saying that some portion of it is yours when I have no proof that both of them have a true claim to it? Isaac, is what's bothering you the fact that this is put before, like we're studying this before a discussion? Like you think the default case is there is some evidence and first we should look for evidence. Um, but like this is the Mishnah, it jumps in. Like we're, this is assuming that there is no evidence. That's our case that we're. Well, so, I, my, so my problem is that you could say to someone, you know, go ahead and, and swear that, you know, you both are owed at least some portion of this object even though um, you don't necessarily know that they're both of them have a true claim. Because in the absence of evidence, I think you should have to go find evidence. Like this, it really bothers me that you would basically say by default, I'm sure both of you have well, a, a true claim in the absence of evidence. Like that just doesn't. So can I respond to that if, if that's, uh, I guess I'm teaching, so I, I can do that. And if, I'm, if, I'm if, also like, yeah. this bothers no, no, me no. and maybe we'll find out later. So. No, no, so, so good. So actually, I think you're hitting it. First, I just want to like commend this, right? It is one of the important things to always ask in any learning of Mishnah, in any learning of Tosefta is what is missing or maybe even what is assumed, right? This is assumed that you know going into it, which is like, it's assumed that you know if you can bring a you can bring other types of Raya, right? That, that, um, uh, uh, that, that, you know, of course, will, will defeat any of this. But, um, but one of the things that, um, you know, I, I think it is important here the way that this gets played out is why a mitzia maybe maybe this is why we actually start with mitzia not because mitzia is really the case at hand but because mitzia is something that really you have no uh, proof of who picked it up first right there's no document proving ownership of it um, as right the way that the gemara plays out the mecca homem car cases 
right? The guy who sold it to to us doesn't remember which which person was actually the person that he properly sold it to. And you know, one of them you know forced the money on him, one of them didn't. And he's like, I don't remember which was which. You know, was I'm a, I'm a, I'm a vendor in the shook? What do I know? You know, um, so it's a case really of absence of proof, right? If there is proof, you know, if I if you steal my car and I'm like, well, let's go take a look at the the you know um, the deed in the car and it says Joel Goldstein on it, but they're like, of I course, burned, by the way, Joel. I no, of course, know. yes, you know, which is you know, but, but there are ways around this. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. I see um, Eliezer has something he's been wanting to say, so I want him to to jump in here. So I I just think that what's culturally missing from I think about the worry about people taking advantage is the weight of the shua and I think that that you know like we're I think we're living in a, in a time maybe where um you know God's involvement uh, feels less important but if we think even in the in a secular court of law when someone is put, putting their hand like it's one thing to lie but it's nothing to lie while swearing on a Bible and I think that 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 the the fact that that even in the in the second Mishnah, they're trying to get, if there's a there's a way to not swear that it's better. Um, it's, it's, it's just showing that I think that there's actually a weightiness that it actually can come to bring an actual resolution of some of some sort, as opposed to just telling some guy, oh, just swear to this, because I think people are living in a in a world where where swearing actually has a consequence, a fear based consequence. Um, so it's more effective, you know, effective. <laughs> Yeah, and I appreciate that. I was thinking a lot when reading this mission out of like in our court system, and I'm not an expert on this by any any means, but like I almost feel like the oath is is almost just like performative in some ways. I don't know. Maybe some people it does mean a lot, but it almost feels performative in our world. And I don't think it is in their world. In this. Although Chazal are afraid of that. They're afraid of people who will falsely swear, but I don't think they think that's the default. Um, well, I, so. I, the, tr the truth is, I think the assumption of the Mishnahs in general, all over Shas, is that we're dealing with... Uh, righteous people mm -hmm. and that if a person says that he owns it he really thinks he owns it he, he's not he is convinced that he picked it up first and the other one's convinced he picked it up first and that happens you know because people you know they say that the worst kind of testimony is eyewitness testimony because people see different things from the same the same moment so two people they each think they picked it up first so we're dealing with people who Honest to God, believe that it's theirs. If we're not, we're not really making a halacha for liars. A liars will will get around our system. Liars will make all kinds of shvuas and all do all kinds of stuff. We're assuming that these people are righteous people, and we're trying to settle things in that way. Um, uh, there will be there will be pushback. Rabbi Yossi, right, is one of the big big people who's tanaically is going to be right. like, well, yeah, but the, the Ramaim, you know, what about them? You know, over and over. Oh, again. That, no, but that's exactly proves my point. Yeah. In other words, only he, he's saying we are worried about it. And as up till now, we were not worried about it. Good. And yeah, Yavni's got a great point. What in the, you know, eventually we're gonna get to the with the documents, we're gonna get to a point where we do assume people are cheating one another. So um but but you're right. I I think no, but I think Rob Nachum, I, I really like your point in that. I think there is a more of an assumption in their world and maybe even in some, you know, like in a world where everybody has is committed to a similar religious project. Right. Um, you know, even like in the modern Jewish world, to some extent. Right. Of, yeah, people are not going to to be um, such awful people. They're going to do bad things. They're going to make mistakes. Maybe they're going to be mistaken. But we don't assume as much, you know, uh, malfeasance as, as maybe we have uh, that we see, uh, you know, day to day. Uh, maybe we see less than we think we are. Maybe the news just accentuates. I'm not sure, but um, um, good. Um, Asher, I, I saw your hand. I feel like. So, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Jess, is that you? Jess and then Asher. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, I feel like these questions of like who you trust are actually very present in the Tanaim's world and not being in a homogenous society. And you see that a lot in places like the to Mai. Um, it happens to be not coming up here. And it's maybe a really interesting question why we do see that coming up around tides and we don't see it coming up so press so at the forefront here but it certainly feels like a very like a question that's at the forefront of their minds in a lot of ways good I, can i if i can build on that a little bit and i think maybe you're saying this right also it's an interesting question of where do we assume people are going to cheat in ritual law versus in in uh, monetary law um and those might be different things a little bit right the maya has a lot about Right. Although ties is like maybe, you know, straddles that boundary between both ritual law and monetary law. 
Um, but, you know, there really, really is a sense that maybe people will be more willing to, you know, they care less about Tuma and Tahara or they care less about, you know, tithing their food because, I mean, who cares, right? You know, uh, what do those Levim need, need it for anyway? But, uh, you know, versus, oh, but, you know, it's actually taking someone's property. Maybe that bothers me. Maybe I'm a little bit more nervous about that. I don't know if that's true. I'm just going to, you know, throw out that question more than anything. So, Justin, am I, am I giving, uh, being correct in what you're trying to say or? or... Yeah, I mean, you. You said the thing I was going to say back to you, which was that I'm not sure there's such a clear division here between ritual and monetary laws, especially when we're talking about types and the theory that you said. Yeah, yeah. No, it's very interesting where in, where they are worried about this and where they aren't so worried. So that's, that's also something I, I think is is a point I, I heard from one of my teachers once is, is you know, the division that the tour makes between, you know, Chosh and Mishpat and your idea and, and Orachim, it's, it's really nice organizational scheme. It doesn't mean that just because something is, is in, you know, Chosh and Mishpat, it isn't ritual or something is in your idea and it's not monetary or, you know, you know, or, or never, you know, so um, it's, you know, it's a nice organizational scheme, but it doesn't, the laws don't necessarily fall so, so beautifully into one category or another uh, as well. Um, Isaac, I thought I saw your hand as well, so. No. Okay. Great. Um, I want to actually move on to Mishnah. I, 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 yeah, I, I, Asher, I go for line. it. I was in line, right? Go for it, um, please. I'm just also wondering. I was I was trying to understand when a situation like this would happen when two people would be holding something. The first thing that came to mind is those sitcoms where, like, you see the the people in the in the store on Black Friday and everybody's grabbing the same garment and saying, "No, it's mine. It's mine. I got here first. I got." But the other thing I was wondering is the use of the word "shemitzatia" and the second. The second peric uh, is Elo Metziot. I'm wondering if this is sort of setting the stage for somebody who finds something and halachically doesn't have to machriz, mm -hmm. but somebody else comes and says, but you know what? I can prove that's mine. And I'm wondering if this is almost sort of setting the stage for, for that situation, in which case both claimants have a valid claim technically. Yeah, it's. I think it's, it, it's several reasons. I remember in the Rosh, but I think others say this as well. Like they just automatically assume, what are we talking about? You know, place that's Rov Goyim, right? So it's like any Mitzia is like open, you know, for anybody, right? Because if, if the majority of people are non Jews, right? With bracketing the whole thing of like, what if we, even the, right, the Rambam starts this, right? We live in a place where non Jews are, are good people and they have laws about property and so forth. Pretend that's not the case, right? Um, then, um, you know, it's it's kind of anything you find is op is fair game at that point. And so the assumption is that this is, yeah, we get to keep this. We both grabbed it. And, and I also just like your marketplace thing. I, I the way I imagine the Mecca Chobemkar case in some ways, and maybe people have better visions of this than me, but was, yeah, it's like a busy marketplace and you're both trying to buy the last, I don't know, Apple and you both like, you know, throw money at the guy, <laughs> you know, and he takes both of it, but he's like, one of it's kind of like pressed into his hand. The other one is like, he actually takes, you know, and he doesn't know what was going on. It's a very confusing, you know, crazy thing. And you both grab the Apple at the same time, you know, it's, uh, um, uh, I don't know why I like apples in this case. It's apple season, but uh, so I was imagining something like that a little bit. Um, but uh, Yavni, I have a different question about halacha bet of the tosefta. But if you want to move on, we can move on. But um, I am, I am okay, yeah. Let's let's ask it, and if we don't decide we're not going to answer it, we'll just we'll leave it hanging. Just the the way that they're phrasing the kloloshel davar, the general rule that um, like Alan very carefully translated is that you don't like. You, that you don't make an oath on any less than half. Um, but I don't like from the language, it seems like it says you're making an oath on half or like no more than half, maybe. And that's not the way the math plays out. And it doesn't seem to be the general rule. The general rule seems to be like you make an oath on what you're going to end up taking based on their equation, which, is not, which isn't really half. Mm, yeah, um, that's a great point. So, yeah. So I don't know if anyone has. Yeah, because uh, no, you're right. That, you're right. Uh, I just want to play that out completely, right? Because the guy who says that I I owe all of it, he makes an oath that he's got no less than five sticks five of sixth, it, right? Yeah, which, which is not half of his claim. Um, yeah. yeah, so it um, um, you could read it, I guess, as we don't make you make uh, an oath of any well uh, any less than half of your claim. Toen um, Toen is the is the is the problematic word really because it is half. It's half of what there is in a dispute about. In mm -hmm. other words, the one who Mm. claims he owns it all the other one agrees with him you own two-thirds of it there's only a dispute right. about about what's about the other third right and right it's that, half of the, half. the middle yeah. Half. Yeah. 
So, but but the word to'en is a little bit misleading because to'en sounds like his his, his actual claim. Right. But really, what but you mean is uh... his his claim, which is in dispute. That, that right. Okay, that's word. good. That's good. That's helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Which you, you could say, right? He, he is zochev for for the first third, you know, uh, 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 first fifth of it, or whatever. But yeah. Um, but uh, or six. We're in six here. Sorry. Uh, but, <laughs> I don't remember which fact. Yeah. Oh, Rav Nachum, you, you got muted somehow. Um, so we lost. I want to say one more thing. Also, Yavni is quite correct. Please. The real motivating factor is you, you're never going to swear, and this kind of addresses something that Isaac was saying, that Isaac, Yitzhak, Isaac was saying, that, that you never swear on more than what you're actually going to, the base thing is going to award you. We're never going to make somebody swear. That's a sort of underlying principle. We're never going to make somebody swear that he gets something and then, then not give it to him. In other words, that would be a useless swear. We, we make you always swear the minimum of what, of what you know, there was the minimum swear that you can, which is what you're actually going to get if, if your swear is true. I'm not going to make you swear you own it all and give you half. Then that was like a needless uh, exaggeration on your part. Also, there's another principle involved, which we'll see later, which is that we, we don't want to make the based in look uh, bad. And, and if we have shavuot that are mutually, uh, uh, how do you say, exclusive. Exclusive. Yeah, they, 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 you can't have you can't uh, make Kayim both of them logically. Then it makes the base din look like they're making people do stuff that um, is impossible. The base din is, is is coming to an impossible you know requirement here that they both say they own it all. So it makes the base din look like idiots. So that so there's two principles. One is you don't want a base din look bad, and the other is you don't want uh, you you shouldn't require somebody to swear for more than you're actually going to give him. Good. With that, I think just looking at the time, I, I apologize. We're not, we're not, maybe it's good that we're not moving so fast. Maybe we're just getting a lot of principles out here. Uh, but um, I think it's probably a good time to take a five minute break, Rav Nachum, and you think, uh, and then we'll come back. Great. So see everybody in five. Good everyone. <laughs> Let's come back. Um, one thing I want to jump in on here um, uh, before we even look at uh, Mishnah Bet and Gimel, which we've, we've talked about a little bit or some of the ideas around them. Um, I, you know, one of the things, because the, the Tosef is going to bring this up, um, just in terms of machlokot in this chapter, what do we see? Like, do we see a lot of machlokot? You know, it's hard to say a lot, right? I, I was trying to think about like different chapters of Mishnayot, like how much machlokot there is in there. But uh, obviously, I have people like if anyone you know says um, I was in the fifth chapter of Vachim every day in the morning, right? That's a chapter that has no machlokat in it uh, in Mishnah. Um, there's a few of those, um, but uh, um... it, this like uh, in the Mishnah, it's almost synthetical as it has absolutely no machlokat, and only the last Mishnah that is uh, kind Good. of off the Nase has a machlokat, so it. It, it seems like the first paragraph of Kiddushin, like a list. Yeah, of things. good. I, I think every mayor has also like an opinion that shows up somewhere that I think was was in dispute, right? Was that in the Mishnah as well? Did I did I remember that correctly? Uh, Mishnah Vav. Mishnah Vav. Okay, so yeah, so towards the end, we start to get a little bit of, it's very about Acharut Nechassim, right? Um, but but yeah, I think this actually, I don't know what to make of that necessarily halachically, but it doesn't it doesn't seem to have a lot of Tanitic dispute in here, right? These are just kind of rules we have, um, undisputed. There's a little bit, I think, more in the, not a lot, but a little bit more in the Tosefta, right? And I, I think we, we kick it off kind of in some ways with, um, right, this piece here about the question of how you are kone, an animal, uh, uh, we, which is in Halacha Gimel, uh, which the Mishnah doesn't seem right to have any any not only just machlok and any chiluk uh, in, in like what kind of animal it is, right? Uh, this is right. Right. End of story. Rochev and manhig seem to be the same kind of thing here, um, as opposed to the um, uh, Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Um, but uh, it's, it's hard to read Rabbi Huda's opinion. Maybe we'll read it out loud, but um, in a second. But uh, you know, he seems to have something a little bit different, or maybe a little bit more nuanced uh, about all of this. Um, with that, maybe we'll, let's launch in. Let's let's read Mishnah Bed and Halacha Gimel together. Uh, not to, not we'll read it together. I want to read one right after the other. Is what I mean. Somebody want to read? Um, before I volunteer, somebody. I'm happy to read. Go for it, please. 
זה יישבע שאין לו בה פחות מחצייה, וזה יישבע שאין לו בה פחות מחצייה, ויחלוקו. בזמן שהם מודים, או שיש להם עדים, חוקרים בלא שבוע. אתה רוצה לקרוא את הנקסט? אני רוצה לקרוא את הלכה ג' בתוספתא. שניים שהיו מושכים את הגמל ומנהיגים בחמור, או שהיה אחד מושך ואחד מנהיג, כמידה הזאת. רבי יהודה אומר, המושך את הגמל והמנהיג את החמור, הרי זה זכה. So. This is more clear. The mission is more clear. Yes. A little bit <laughs> It's a mess. Yeah. Um, oh. The mission is just saying um, the kind of equivalence between, uh, in other words, well, two riding on the horse. So they're both kind of holding it. Or even one is as an equivalence to one riding and one uh, directing it. I don't know, with a mm-hmm. stick or... I, oh, I was assuming, maybe, maybe I'm, influ- I'm influenced by the Gemara, I think, a little bit here, if I remember correctly, but yeah, I was, like, it, pulling the horse by his... Uh, um, right, uh, I'm just thinking because of the Tosefta uses the words Moshchim, maybe mm-hmm. Manihig is a little different from Moshchim. Yeah. Or maybe not. Uh, You're right. Manhig, maybe the Gemara manhig, understands it as the same. Isn't Manihig, like, kicking the animal to make it go? Uh, good, that becomes a whole thing about Israel Chev. Manhig also, um, it was going to be a whole question. So, yeah, you know, it's a really good question of like, are those, is Manhig kicking it versus Rochev? Is, I, well, sorry, I'm going to let, I'm interrupting you. I'll let, play it out. Or anyway, oh. so the, the mission concludes okay. by saying that if there's Edim, then of course we're going to go with the Edim. And, and the whole assumption is we don't have Edim, and that's why we said uh, you, you are Cholek, Cholkin, apparently equally. Here we're good. talking about kind of unequal cases, I would say, in the Tosefta. Because one mm-hmm. is pulling a gamal and one is, uh, or well, it says, Shnaim shayu moshchim et ha gamal umanhigim chamor. I think it means that they're both doing both actions. They're yeah. both They're both doing both actions. They're both, one, you know, they're both sort of pulling at the camel at the same time as they're directing the, the donkey. Or one is pulling and the other is directing. So what does it mean, kamidazo? I guess it means half and half. I'm not sure what it means, kamidazo. Rabbi Yehuda says, no. I think Rabbi Yehuda says, no. Each one gets what he was manhig. I think kind of that's, maybe, maybe they were in partnership in the first case. They weren't both doing both actions. One was doing one action, the other was doing the other action. And they, but they were doing it in partnership. And, and the idea is that they divide it up evenly, is the first opinion. And Rabbi Huda maybe is saying, the one that gets the, that's pulling the Gamal, he gets that. And it's Harei Zezacha. He's Zacha, but with the one that he is manipulating. That's the way I, I see it. But, but I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So, good. I've got, I saw, let's see, we'll go Eliezer, Lexi, Raphael, and there might be more uh, before. Uh... Uh. I mean, it just didn't, I think Kimi does would just like see above, you know, just like what we were just talking about, because I feel like the breakup here is like less clear about like halacha alav, halacha bed, halacha gimel. And then, and then the second part, I don't know that it's holek, isn't it just, maybe I completely misunderstand it. I feel like it's just explaining the mechanism that allows for to be zocha each animal, the moshe gamal, because that's, Maybe the primary way that you, you, you know, lead a, lead a, a, ca- a camel, and the second is so you, you don't you don't lead a donkey, you ride on the donkey. Yeah, yeah, I think he I think he might be cholak on the Mishnah, maybe, maybe right, or he may be you know kind of nuancing the Mishnah, one of the two. Um, you know, it, it, it does add to me. It added this really nice piece of well, it depends what kind of thing it is as to how how are you grasping it, right? That that counts, right? It might different things may have different ways of attaining them, um, but. Uh, but good. I see. See, I said, was it Lexi there, Raphael? Is that the order I decided to go on? Uh, yeah. Let's go for that. The Kamida Hazards or Bimida Hazard, just that it, the yeah. 
commentators that I read seem to not understand it as being referring to the chetzi chetzi. They like most of them seem to, with either girsa actually, see it as referring to like a limitation of which methods work with which animal. Like kind of leading into the Rebbe Yehuda, you know, segue. Yeah, exactly. It's I, I think I said some versions either had it or maybe it was the versions had can be dahazot kana. Is, is there's a missing word kana there uh, potentially, uh, or there wasn't a missing word? Someone filled it in. One of the two, but uh, you know. So 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 uh, then what what is so what is the argument between the two of them that the mission is coming to? What is the argument between these two people that the mission is coming to resolve? What do they claim, and what's the mission posturing? I oh I think they both claim the behemoth, mm -hmm. right? And and the Mishnah is claiming, you know, the Mishnah says, well, if you're both doing uh, what do you mean the behemoth? Actions, we have a chamor and a gamal. Specify. Yes. Oh, good. I, well, the, the Mishnah. The Mishnah is just behemoth, right? The, no, no, the no. I mean, in, in, I'm talking about tosefta. Yeah, I think the the Rabbi Huda says if you have one person who is manhig ha gamal and another is moshech the gamal, the moshech has a better claim to it, and vice versa with the chamor. So. But it seems that Tanakama of the Tosefta is thinks that there's some ratio of claim, whereas Rabbi Yehuda yeah. thinks that it's like absolute. Is that the machloka between the Tanakama and Rabbi Yehuda? Yes. Probably. Perhaps. Yeah, you know, it's, it's and this is what I read it again, right? Shayu Moshlimit Agamal Mahigim Bachamor, right? That um, either that or Rabbi Yehuda is agreeing with them, right? Um, you know, it, it, so it says, Oh, Shaya Had Moshech Beachad Manhig. Right, it must maybe it's meaning a third animal there. It's not so clear, right? It, that's the, the that's why the Tosefta is really hard to unravel at this point. I think um, is that no, the first I, part I, of the Tosefta says that they're both doing both actions. No, the first case, uh, right? I think that Tosefta is presenting the first case is that they're both doing the same action. Oh yeah, but then that's the one. Oh yeah, they're both doing those fit it. With, well, go for it. Doing either one or the other. Mm -hmm. So that's the third, right? The third piece of the mission, right? The first is that they're both Moshech the Gamal. The second, they're both Manhig the Chamor. And the third is, or they're one's doing one and one's doing the other, right? right. And so there, so, Rabbi Yehuda might be Cholak and saying, well, I disagree with that third piece, right? I agree with Moshech the Gamal. I agree with Manhig the Chamor. I don't agree with the Chamor. Kamida Hazot mean is the question. Yeah. So Kamida Hazot, uh, sorry. Uh, let's Could just I, be I, half, I, half. Before we get to Isaac, I, I, Raphael, I promised you, and I think it's Isaac who's, who's trying to say something, and then uh, and we'll, we'll go through. Yeah. I think that just uh, as a concept, I think that uh, the the, the the gap between the Mishnah and the Tosefta actually really puts well this ikaron, that you know, the Choronim is very strong, uh, of Kinyan is Hora'at Ba'alut, meaning we're, uh, the language here of Kinyan, I wouldn't take it a uh, like in the simplistic sense that, that we're actually speaking about a situation of the buy, buying it as much as actually Ilchot Kinyan actually help us quite well to define who is the actual owner of some uh, of something. And that's in Rabiuda it becomes very clear. Because like a eh, eh, meaning when I see someone acting as a Baalim towards an animal, meaning the way that you act as a Baal to this animal, for example, in a in, in a Hamo, being riding on it, it's the way that uh, someone that owns it, uh, uses it, but like, for example, pulling around, it's more as, I don't know, a slave pulls his master on the Hamo. So here I think that that's the, that goes a bit back again to the, to the idea that the Tosefta brings a more a physical aspect it, to Ilchote. Uh, uh, to 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 the here, that the Mishnah says every behema they're equal, meaning I don't actually care on how I see them making any orad balut if they don't have uh, they both have chazoka over it, they're both holding it of in some way, so they both need shvua. Um, but like the kilo, the Tosefta brings the idea of horad balut to the to like this point that they're actually acting if the as if they're owners. So they're actually like holding the talit enough that they can uh, that they can actually cling to that piece, kemida zot. Or... Yeah, no, wonderful. I was actually thinking about this in terms of if you can imagine, and I don't know if this is a great, I think it may be a good parallel, right? If two people showed up in a car and one was driving the car and one was sitting shotgun, right? I think we would say the person driving the car had more claim to it, right? But if we had a case where one person was driving like a limousine and another person was sitting in the back of it, 
right? We claim the person in the back of the limousine had more claim to that that car than the person driving it potentially. Maybe I, I you know, because with a cab driver that wouldn't quite work. There's a lot, you know, maybe you're renting the limo. Hey, I, that's why it's not a perfect analogy, I don't think. Um, but uh, but I, I think that's kind of what's going on here is like who is I think that's great. You know, which which action shows has more of a kind of uh, you know a default of balut over this animal. Uh, the person riding it or the person leading it depends on, and Rabbi Yehuda is saying it depends on the animal. And I think maybe even the, the, the ratio of the Tosefta and also the Mishnah itself is saying, well, maybe not, right? It, it, for animals, it's, it's the same. It doesn't matter which position you're in. So, um, but uh, I don't know. Rav Nachman, it looks like you might have something to say. I wasn't sure. Well, I, I, I still will prefer my unique reading of the Mishnah, <laughs> of, the, of the Tosefta, sorry, of the Tosefta, which nobody else in the world says. I still think it makes sense because Rabbi Yehuda is disagreeing with the first din, and the and 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 you have to come up with some disagreement. And the first din is, I think, is still about uh, uh, two people participating in the hanhaga of two animals, and the and they're saying you divide. The first case is saying you divide them monetarily, and the second case is saying you divide them by the one that is more on the possession of the one. In other words, as if there's if they're if they're working together, even though they're working together, the one is holding the Kamal and the other is holding the the other, the 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 Hamor, then you give it to the guy who's holding it, even though they're working together. That, that's the way I, I still like that reading, but I, I'm more the I mean I'm no I really like that right? reading too actually. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just interesting way of reading I intentionally tried to read it in a you know different way that made still made sense but uh so, okay you but, know i like that i see that but, nobody uh, is agreeing with me so fine <laughs> for, the mo for the moment for the moment you know we may change our minds that's uh but uh good and anyway, i um uh i also right just wanted to point sorry was there anybody else who had a, a thought on this this is yeah uh, yeah so sorry right. you go for it, please yeah isaac please so, so technically doesn't rubber yehuda's um statement also imply a fourth case in which um, so case one is they're both pulling and they're both driving each animal. Um, and then the second case is one of them is pulling and one of them is uh, driving, but it doesn't say which animal they're doing that to. And then Rabbi Yehuda says it depends on which animal is matched with its, which action. So technically, if you have the wrong one for each, right, like what the first person is Moshe, the um, donkey, and the second person is Manhig, the, uh, the gamal, the camel. Nobody has a claim to either end, according to you. No, I, I think that would, I think it would only be if they're disputing the claim, right? This is if like, one oh, of them right. If they're disputing, but if they're disputing the claim, then in that case, they don't have a case. Well, because this there's it. another. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Yafi, please. Okay. Go, yeah, Yafi, go for it. Okay, I, 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 I go, Yafi, go, I, I'm, I'm with that to you, please. I understood. Maybe this is this the Rav Nachum's chidush that I'm missing. That I, I understood it to be like. The actual situation is one animal, and there are two people doing something to that one animal. In the first case, they're both doing the same thing to the animal. Either they're both Moshech the Gamal or they're both Manhig the Chamor. And in the second case or third case, if you want to think of it that way, then uh, they're again both doing they're both doing different things to the one. So one is Moshech and one is Manhig, whatever those two things mean, to the same animal. And we don't know which it is, Gamal or Chamor. Tanakama says, Kemida Hazot. What does Kemida Hazot mean? It's not entirely clear. I interpreted that to mean just like we said in the previous halacha. That like they take oaths according to what they claim, and then they get half of they get half of the difference. They split the difference. Okay. And then Rabbi Yehuda is cholek on that last, just that last part that he says, yeah. well, if they're doing different things to the animal, then clearly the one who knows how to handle a donkey is the donkey order, right? So like if they're Moshech, the Gamal, then they have the stronger claim and it's theirs. Or if they're Manhig and the other one is Manhig, mm. the Gamal, because you don't Manhig a Gamal. Whereas if it's a donkey, then if they're Manhig, the Gamal, then they have the stronger claim and, and the one who's Moshech, the Gamal, is, doesn't have the claim. Okay, I like, I, very, I like very much yeah. your explanation. You guys persuaded me. Amazing, uh, but uh, we should we shouldn't give up on Rav Nachum's though. I don't want to give up on that on that because uh, it was it was so creative that uh, we should keep it for a while at least. Okay. Uh, I, I still hold that case one has to be about two animals because it says Uman he, not Oman he. That's uh, uh, standard, uh, uh, the Mish, yeah, Uman the Mishnah can mean or. That's actually or Tosefta language can can mean or uh, or. 
Yeah, in English. Yeah, sorry. I'll, I'll get my language straight here. But uh, so good. I, I want to. I don't want to blow by this with, without um, um, uh, speaking about like writing an animal very quickly. Uh, but um, the end of the mission, I think, is so important, right? Uh, you know, uh, right? At the time, if either of, if if the parties agree about a certain thing, right? Like they're, they're like, oh yeah, this this half is actually I only have half. You only have half, or, or they have some modera, some admission, right? Um, or if they're what they have aiding, which is going to be an interesting case. Like what's going on there? Because like, clearly, if they have one of them has two aiding to bring, right? Well, then they get the thing, right? So in the way like the Tiferet Israel understands this is um, right. Each one has an idiom. The idiom are, are are contradictory to each other, but they're idiom now brought into the case. It's not just the two people. There's a third factor, right? Then the shua drops out all of a sudden. Um, go for it, Alan. I thought I heard Alan. Yeah. Maybe. The strange the strange part here was why does the mission need to specify the, the first case of all? It's pshita. That she and him loading, but it's it won't even get to court. Good. Would you have an answer? Uh, it must be that the the have I mean that is formally okay. The people are in uh, uh, ownership is something unitary, and so in, in in order to cement that each party owns half, we need to um we we need to make that official by um uh, taking a a shua, right? That that would be. The only explanation I can come up with. It seems it seems weak. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's something I I was imagining it, something a little different. Mean, here, here's another yeah. option. It, it might mean to answer your question. It might mean that Modi means okay. I'm Modi. I don't want to swear. You can have the whole thing. Then the question is, maybe we sit. So then he says, yeah, but I want the other guy to swear. <laughs> In other words, the guy who's Modi is saying, I want the other guy to swear because I'm not swearing because I'm afraid to swear. He's so sure it's his. I want it, so he better swear. And so now we're saying, no, you don't do that. Once the other guy says he's Mode, then then the other guy's off the hook. He doesn't have to swear. Isn't Modim Mode Bimiktsat? Good, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it's, yeah. Well, also just Rev uh, wouldn't yeah. why would it be plural if it's your explanation? Yeah, okay. Which is why I thought it has to be Mode Bimiktsat because and, uh -huh. he's Mode Bimiktsat. And and yeah, because, because, because no, otherwise. So that's your question. Ah, you're saying mode of a mix up means I'm mode that it's half is for you and you're mode that half is for me. And so we're both agreement and the world has come to peace. And so obviously we don't gonna make a shaboy here. Okay, yeah, okay. Right. I but that. just I take that I, direction was, also. <laughs> yeah, just because otherwise I think if it were your explanation, it would have said Mode. Right. All we need for your explanation is one person to be mode, not both people. Seems right. like it seems like it means both people have to be mode to something. And then yeah, also you wouldn't I mean, say I understood it the plural to just mean in a case where there is mahoda, in other words, of some sort. Uh, but yeah, I took it in a general yeah. sense. But yeah, you're probably you're right. The, um, the Tifa Yisrael says a third right, a third person comes along and, and contradicts both of them and says, Oh, actually it's mine. He does? Where is he? Ah, uh, but that third person is not holding it? Yeah. Yeah, I like. I'll copy and he it. wants to spoil it for them, you're saying? And then, then they don't have to take a shua. Yeah, That's just, which case? That's the Modim? This is, or? The, the, this is the uh, uh, Tiferet Israel and, and these man shame Modim. But uh, this is Mash Mavada and I get a fair. Shem Akshishan. Shem Marshe who had be out of the same Katru Hamiadok. Oh, this is deep into his. This is I have it as like a sub piece of his. Oh, okay, that's why I didn't see it. Um, I'll have to take a look. But uh, uh, but all right, for uh, I'll leave it unless somebody else has. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Alan posted it, so we can take a look at that um, afterwards. Um, but uh, this will also, I think, be an important point of just um, you know that you know shua isn't just a procedure that always happens every time you show up in court, right? It has it needs certain parameters to it. And certain things like the existence of the ADM and so forth can take us out of that world. Um, but Joel, uh, go can up. you yeah. go for it? Can you just clarify how you're reading the ratio of halacha gimel, please? Um, oh yes, great. Um, so shnei mayu shayum 
at the Gamal. So two people are whatever Moshech means here. They're dragging the Gamal, you know, by the rain. And dragging, I don't mean like forcing necessarily. I mean like leading, right? Uman higim bechamor. Or two people are both doing whatever manhig is, which, which Eliezer nicely pointed out to us could be, could be writing, right? The Gamal points that out too, right? Um, or, you know, or a third case, or one is Moshech and one is manhig. So there's two people with an animal. One is doing the Moshech, one is doing the Hanhaga. Um, but those are all equal. Uh, and in other words, therefore, the Gamal and the Hamor are just like Lashon Hoveh, right? It's just like, uh, yeah, that's usually how people do this, but uh, it doesn't have to be a Gamal or Hamor. It's like, I, I'd say agree with the Mishnah in that sense. Is that, Alan, does that make sense? But but h- how would, what does it mean, Oshaya Echad Moshech Echad Manhig? The same animal. So one is doing the Meshicha, one is, let's, let's pretend let's pretend for the moment that, that Manhig is to ride it, or maybe it's hitting with the stick behind, whatever it may be. Right. So both of them come in, you know, into court claiming this animal and they're, you know, one of these is the, is the, the Moshef and one is the Manhig um, and they're both making a claim to this animal. This but, ma- but Manhig, it seems, according to the Mishnah, is not riding it because according to the Mishnah, it's Oshe Haya Echad Rocheve Echad Manhig. Yes. So, yes. Great. So either that they're talking about two different types of Hanhaga, right? Uh, and in the Mishnah, it's a different type that's not the same as Rikhi is writing. Or I could imagine, this is the way I was, you know, one one thing, maybe I got this from the Quran, I can't remember, right? Is you can imagine a person writing and another person also writing, but like writing where they're like kicking, they're the one, you know, with the, I don't know, the, the stirrups and the, is that the person who kicks the animal? And I, I know nothing about horse riding, but you know, spurs? one's directing. Oh, yeah. Spurs. Your spurs, yeah. Lexi, go for it. It's uh, maybe you'll help me out here a little bit. With animals, though, also it's not always again just like literally drawing, right? That comes up in in today's doc, actually, right? It can be like calling it and the animal coming, mm-hmm. like, the stick and it runs, right? So it could be that one of the people is doing mashicha in one of the various forms that we consider to be mashicha, which is not necessarily literally pulling it with its reins, and the other one is like holding its reins. So. Great. Yeah. So it could be, you know, they're both riding the animal, but they're in different positions on it, you know, in, in terms of uh, that was, that's where I, Alan, maybe I was trying to get into like the car case of one person is driving and one person is riding shotgun, you know, it might be a little mm-hmm. different, but uh, um, I think though, you know, you're, it's not, it's not very clear, right? I think this, so we started with this, this Tosefta is a little bit harder to understand even in light of the Mishnah and definitely harder even without the Mishnah with you. So um but, uh, was that helpful at all? I don't know if that was. Uh, uh, hopefully, yeah. it was. It, it, it's a helpful clarification, but I guess then, what, why is Rabbi Yehuda any different than Shneim? Yeah, oh, he's just agreeing. Oh, sorry, because in the ratio you're saying Shneim Hayu Moshkin, they're both doing the Mishikat together. Exactly. Rabbi Yehuda is disagreeing with the third piece, the Oshaya Had Moshech Had Manhig. Right? He's like, well, no, 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 no. You know, if it's a Gamal, you got to be Moshech. If you're, if it's the Hamor, you're going to be Manhig. And if you're not doing that action, you have no claim to it. Yeah. So, um, or at least a lesser claim. I don't want to say no claim. Let's say a lesser claim for the moment. But, uh, I, I have a question about Mishnah Gimel, which we'll, we'll read. But I don't think there's exactly a Tosefta parallel for this. My question is why? Maybe it's like a very specific case, and it's like it's not it's not like a generalized uh, thing. It's like it's it just a it's a little bit more detailed than the other uh, things. It's, mm-hmm. it's just, uh, so good. I, I think it's a little bit related, right? It's going to get into like the switch as to like, well, how are you zochet for something, right? If you say if I see something, I write an animal. But I kind of got the impression that this is almost a little bit of an outlier case where, well, since we're talking about people riding on animals in general, we're going to throw in this case. It's a nice, you know, continuation, you know, uh, 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 in terms of what we were already talking about, cases of people riding on animals, but not necessarily the same case in terms of like how you're Zochef or something. Um, Lexi, go for it. It's, uh... Part of why this spawns a whole discussion in the Gemara about what it means to be like Zochef and Metzia for somebody else is because... That is why it's otherwise the things that we find here, it's about a person either, again, making a claim of ownership that is just, I found this or I bought this, et cetera, 
or it's the case of people who are considered extensions of yourselves or like a place that is considered an extension of yourself acquiring something for you. And this is really the only case where we see the idea of like somebody who is considered to be another fully capable agent potentially acquiring something on your behalf. Great. Yeah. It's actually one of my favorite sugiots in the chapter, but um, it's a, uh, um, uh, somebody want to, since we're here, we, we might as well read it. And, and so, yeah, Elias, right. I think you're right in, in some ways, right. This is like a particular case that doesn't fit into the, the kind of a flow in the same ways, except for the fact that it starts with somebody riding on an animal. Uh, and uh, so, so let's, let's read it anyway, just uh, since uh, um, to see if maybe there's anything else we can try out of it. Uh, somebody want to volunteer, read Mishnah of Gimel. Yes, please. He's riding on an animal um, and sees a found object and he says to his fellow, give it to me. And he takes and he says, I, I merited it, it's mine. Um, then he merits it. Um, but if after he gave it to him, he said, I merit it, but I merited it first, I got it first, that doesn't do anything. Great. So just wait, let's, I just want to push a little bit just to have like some characters here, right? We have Rachel and Leah are, are riding on a, a an animal, right? Rachel, excuse me, Rachel is riding on an animal. Leah is walking up outside it. Let's, let's make it really Tanahi here. Uh, and uh, Rachel says, Leah, go get that, uh, that Talit I see sitting out there. Leah picks it up and- That man like, named Yaakov. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fair. Uh, she says, uh, well, too, you know, uh, uh, Rachel says, that's fine. You know, this is too bad. I picked it up. So Rachel's like, I told you to. So what, right? But if Leah picks it up, hands it to Rachel, and then after she hands it to Rachel, says, actually, you know what? No, 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 that was mine. I got it first. Then lo, lo, we'll make the grammar right. Lo amra klum, right? Uh, then she hasn't said anything. So um, so good. This is right. A whole thing of like, Wait, I, I, you I go for it, please. Who, who is it that lo amra klum? The one who originally said, it's mine because I asked you to pick it up, or the one who says, well, you know what? I actually picked it up. I, the, the, the one who picked it up. Clear as to who, who's saying, who's, who that's, didn't say anything. Yeah, it's got to be the one. That, yeah, sorry, Jess, go for it, please. Um, oops, I prefer Jessica, just so you know. Oh, yeah, sorry, um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, there's there's two cases. In the first case, Leah picks it up and before handing it to Rahel says, no, 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 it's mine. Whereas in the second case, Leah hands it to Rahel and then says, hold on, that's mine. Um, so it's in the second, it's layer, but only layer in the second case. Beautiful. Yeah, that's how I'm reading it too. And that's how the Gemara reads it. So it uh, doesn't mean it's the only way to read the Mishnah, but uh, um, but yeah, this is right. This if, is if the two of you and the Gemara read it that way. That's good enough for me. So. It's, uh, no, I think there's something important here of like telling somebody to get something for you, right? Doesn't necessarily give you ownership over it, right? Until they actually decide to give it to you. And that's, that's an uh, important distinction here. Um, but, uh, um, and, and verbal, right? Verbally claiming something or even verbally convincing someone to get something for you is not necessarily enough of a move to, to be, uh, to, to own that thing. Um, so I don't know if anybody had any other thoughts on this Mishnah, um, but. Okay. Good. Let's. Uh, how are we doing on time? We've got twenty minutes, less than twenty minutes, but you know, close to twenty minutes. Um, all right. This is Mission Doll is such a great case. So um, let's uh, um, uh, let's. Yeah, we'll read that one too. Um, anybody? Uh, somebody? Did I see Josie? Did I see your hand for reading before? Is that uh... sure? Go for it. Mission Doll. Ra'a temitzia benafal aleha uva cher bechzikba. Mm. 
אחר גוזלות שלא פרחו, ואמר, זכתה לי שדי, זכתה לא. היה צבי רץ כדרכו, או שהיו גוזלות מפריחים, ואמר, זכתה לי שדי, לא אמר כלום. Good. You give us a general sense of what's going on here. Uh, somebody found something and fell upon it, and somebody else tried to grab it away from them. And uh, the person who fell upon it, you know, uh, make, you know, makes a claim on it. Or they see something running through their yard uh, in an unusual fashion or flying through their yard in an unusual fashion. Uh, you can say, my yard will acquire this for me because my, my yard can do that for me. Um, but uh, if it's just a, uh, a deer, you know, traipsing through the yard in the normal fashion or, uh, you know, birds sort of flying through in the normal fashion, if someone says, my yard will acquire this for me, it's, it's nothing. So, good. I, I want to back up here first. So the first case, right, is someone falls on a found object. This is like a football game here, right? And someone reaches under and grabs the thing out from them, right? It's the scrum kind of, right? This is the, the person who grabs it. is Zoha, right, at that point, right? That person gets the thing. And then we have like a second set of cases, which is, right, you see an animal moving through your, your property, right? And by the way, I'm in a bracket for the moment, the whole question of where that first case is happening, right? Um, is, uh, is it, you know, happening in someone's domain, some, in the public domain, right? It's gonna be an important thing. But the, the second case, right, is an animal's coming through your territory in the way that it, it's not in, in a, a not healthy way of, of going or not, it's not its best way of going through. It's kind of, you know, on its way to getting stuck there in some ways uh, versus a case where it's just like running through your yard at its full speed, um, doing what it needs, you know, what it normally does. And in the first case, your, your verbal claim uh, of your yard, uh, and the yard is the wrong word, of your property uh, works, but in the second case, it doesn't. So, but good, Yavni, is that a hand? Go for it. Uh, sort of, yeah, in the, in those, like the latter cases about the animals in your yard, there's also the element of like other people are running after it, right? Mm -hmm. Good, right? That, that's what I think connects the two, right? These are cases where multiple people are going after a, a lost object or an object. And, you know, it's a question of who gets it, right? Does my ability to pull it out from under you um, work? And does my ability like, well, you're going for it, but it happened, happened on my territory. Does my territory do something for me for this object? Um, Uh, good um but uh um they, by the way people who don't like football like, all power to if you don't great uh the rugby maybe would be a good parallel too i think scrums work there too uh so um uh, or but, going uh, to the black friday cells that you mentioned earlier for those of us who are american <laughs> Good. Yeah. You know, I, I think, Josie, like for me, the, the Mishnah really brings alive, right, the reality of a world where, uh, you know, we, you know, you go into a store and I mean, people do, they still eat you know, right, Black Friday sales, I guess, right, you know, people fight over the last thing on the rack and so forth like that, you know, we, you know, when you order, uh, um, you know, but I, I imagine like a much more chaotic kind of marketplace than we sometimes have, not always, but sometimes have. Uh, yeah, it and, challenges. Uh, You know, the idea, some of the ideas we were talking about earlier about the rabbis, you know, assuming the best in people and in, in how they're writing these Mishnayos, which maybe that's a factor in why it's not in the Tosefta. Yeah, I don't think these are people necessarily trying to steal things from each other of like just the the euphoria. Maybe I'm reading too much into it. You know, like I was at a baseball game a, a couple of days ago. It was last week, last week. It was a week ago, uh, you know, and uh, um, one of the players threw the ball, uh, you know, towards our section. And, you know, everyone just scrambled after. I don't think anyone there was like really trying to fight anybody. It's just like they saw the ball. They wanted to get it. And, you know. It hit one person and then another person grabs it and like whoever ends up with it at the end is kind of the the person who gets it you know and uh, um so yeah and, and that's I, i think an important point to this but uh good i want to look at any other thoughts on this before we look at the, the parallel and what i think is the parallel and such after i i think i have a good claim to it but uh all right let's read the tosefta uh someone want to read Go for it, Alan. Ha'amah, Yisgalabiti, 
במציע שטיפול תוכו היום, לא אמר כלום. יצא לי שם מציע דבריו קיימים. אוקיי. One who says, my house acquired for me this, uh, this object that fell within it. That, yeah, I want to uh, push... Th- uh, this day. Uh, yeah, I want to... Yeah, uh, I want to push that, your... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. It's, it's a future. That will fall within it today. My house right. will... What is it? My house will acquire for anything anything that falls in it today. Uh, it doesn't work. But if... if uh, I'm, I'm see it does come... I was, I was a little bit confused, but it was right. A, a, a Matsya happens to come to him there. His, uh, it, the, the phrase does actually work. I think yes, uh, right? It happened. It, right? it, 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 it has already happened. Yes. Right. And, right. So, and so he's no longer saying he's Kelly BT, he's saying Zahali. Mm-hmm. So yeah. right. you can't make a claim on future things that may happen in your property. Right, but you can make a if you make a claim on what your property is capable of, and it already happened, then you're okay. Right, then you actually get it. That's how it. do you how do you make a distinction between like a, a retrospective at the end of the day versus something that already happened from from, from the time of this halacha being taught? Like why? Meaning, I, I I I'm sure that if you're saying this is for sure the the pshat, that's fine, but. By saying Yatsal at the end of the day, if if retroactively it ended up that that there was a that there was something there to be claimed, then then it then it then it works. Yeah, it's you know, uh, in other words, like why did it work even though he didn't know the thing was there? Is that what you're no, saying? No, I'm saying like I, I think like I, I understood the the the, the halacha saying anyone who says you know anything that falls into my property, I'm gonna be zo- I'm gonna be zochet. It doesn't count, but if it ended up that there was such a thing that happened, meaning he, like meaning that it's not like I think a, the I think the statement is also after the fact, right? Maybe. Well, yes, yeah. that's the way I was understanding it. Yeah, I think the second half it has to be in a scenario, and I'm obviously I also influenced by the like different commentators, but like I think it has to be a scenario where something has like been in his house and he knows, right? Because otherwise, also like this isn't. It's not the language of like lechakila b'diavad, right? Like the loa mark plume is generally like it is fundamentally ineffective, right? And so like even though the language like without that does kind of seem like oh you shouldn't really do this, but like if it actually happened, it works. I think it, that kind of language often doesn't work as well in like the well. Obviously, we talked about the not so clear divisions between our civil cases and ritual stuff, but it works a lot less well in the civil cases in the sense that it's like. Yeah, it just doesn't accomplish anything um, when you say if something falls in, it'll acquire. But if you know something fell in, even if you don't know much about it, even if you're not there, then it can acquire for you. Yeah, I, I'm gonna right. just and I, go, 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 sorry. Go ahead, Alan, and then um, uh, just just to repeat back what I'm hearing from Lexi. In other words, like, it, how could it be that if it's lower mark bloom, that still but the other one can acquire it? Uh, if it's it's ain't a, it's ain't no clue. Therefore, that we must be talking about a different case. Is that, that's I think which I think is Eliezer's question in the first place, right? If, I, if I'm getting that well, correct. I'm, well, I'm well, I'm saying that one is about a theoretical versus something that that exists. You can't yeah. say that in general anything that happened because that you can't make a claim on something that's not there. But if there's something that's there, then then the, is there something that ends up being there? you know, in your Fatser or near Sada, then it's your, I don't know, maybe yeah. it doesn't make sense. I didn't understand that, you know. Uh, well, good, 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 so, so just to read, essentially this is what Lexi is saying, right? If anyone has, uh, right, the Tosefta on the back of your, if you have the Gemara with you, right? Um, the Tosefta is, is right after the Mordechai, I think, right? Yeah, right after the Mordechai. <laughs> if you look at the, min, the Minchat Yitzchak, right, on that Tosefta, I'll, I'll just read it out loud and I'll read it slowly, um, right? Yitzalo Sham right so he's saying um and this is i think he's bothered by the same thing that everybody else here has been bothered by it's like wait a second right at the end of the day if it fell in there he gets it so he said no 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 he heard it already happened he doesn't actually know what already happened he heard a rumor right and therefore he says oh well you know 
maybe if that if that's real, then my courtyard is is zocha for me. Then it works, right? But if he says it like my court will be zocha, anything that happens to come into my my yard, you know, after the you know from this point, that doesn't work, right? That's the distinction. Um, I think he's. I don't know if this is the chat of the Tosefta. I think he's dealing with it. It doesn't. It's kind of unclear what's what what's the timeline of the second piece of it. So he's got to come up with a way that uh, it works that it already happened. Um, so no, this is sort of teaching the principle that your house or your courtyard only acquires if you want it to. Mm -hmm. And if you yeah. verbally say that it does, but it doesn't just happen automatically and you can't even make a proviso ahead of time. It ha exactly. You have to know about it and you and then you have to say, and that's similar to the Mishnah that you brought because the Mishnah also is saying that you have to say, I want my field to acquire this uh, thing. And there's some more details about when that actually would work and when it wouldn't work. Exactly. It can't just acquire anything that comes across it. Like that's what they're using it as a way to, to, to you know, as a passageway, right? It has um, to be something but... that you could capture yourself. Exactly. And if it's therefore a slow moving object, you could capture it, then you can acquire it with your field. Beautiful. If you also say. Yes. It, and you have language with it. Yeah. So, Yasni, go for it. Is the, I'm wondering what the reason is that that like who is it the the minchat yitzchak and all of us want to make it um something other than the simple case of like i see something i saw i see something fall into my field and i say my field has claimed it like is that too obvious that that works or say it one more time sorry I, like I just, uh... I don't, i'm trying to understand why it can't be the case of like i see some like he specifies that it's not that it's like just shmua. like i see something fall into my field i say that's mine like that should also work right but maybe that's too obvious it wouldn't like why wouldn't it just just have to be talking about that i think that's pshita right it, it, pshita. at that okay. point okay. yeah I, that's why i said oh, maybe not maybe it's not pshita right because again i didn't physically grab the object grab this it, is right. I don't yeah, think it's because right. we're trying to we're trying to differentiate between the first case and the second case where one is after and one is before one is before and one is yeah. after. Right. So, and but also, we're also oh, excuse me. Uh, you know, please go for it. it it's uh, uh, I, I think we're also trying to rule out a kind of absurdly broad case whereby a person could say anything that ever falls into my yard at any time is something that I acquire. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that's a you can't... Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, you, and I you... think right. And I think that's what. The commentary was trying to say that minimally I have to have heard of it, and right. certainly mm -hmm. if I've seen it. So this also right plays out right. On one hand, your your yard doesn't by itself acquire things. You have to be your yard <laughs> plus speech, and at the same time, it, I'm going to just read it as Rishut Harabim. Rishut Harabim, my own body doesn't necessarily acquire things unless I'm able to hold on to it. Right? If I fall on something and someone else grabs it. That doesn't work either. So this is like depending on you know where it is. You, sometimes you need kind of you need to grab it and end up with it, or you need your property plus your speech. You know, um, but you know, just one of those things by itself may not be may not be sufficient. I wonder. I wonder if there's a progression. First is Rishut to Rabim, and you need to actually physically grab it. Then there's like your sade, your field, which is not your house, and there it needs to be kind of slow moving. And then it's your house. It could be anything, even if it's not slow moving. I'm just wondering if there's a kind of progression as it gets closer to your, um, you know, your land. Then you need less of a grabbing of. It. Yeah. So, great. Uh, I like that progression. So, so I saw Sarah's hand too. Um, yeah, I, I, I was just wondering whether the reason that 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 we need to construct this kind of weird case where like you hear about it falling but you're not actually there is because otherwise it would seem like why are you doing the Kenyan this way at all like if you're in the house and the thing is in the house then like you should be able to do some other mode of Kenyan that we all like some more standard way of doing things so you shouldn't be doing this by verbal verbal assertion unless you're not there so then the case is just a distinction between well like a general anything that comes into my house versus I know that there's something in my house, or at least I have good reason to think that there's something in my house. And that's when I'm gonna do this verbally mm -hmm. because otherwise I should, you know, econa through some other kind of more standard way of doing things. So nice. that leads it actually, 
it brings it back to the previous mission, right? If like I'm sitting on a on a horse and I say to somebody else, I'm, I'm not going to get off my horse. I'm going to get someone else to go get it for me, right? Uh, that isn't Kona unless the person actually hands it to me, you know, and, and so that's even further away in some ways. And so this is a nice progression of like, what, how much do you have to do if you don't do just a normal, like picked up the object and I'm holding it, you know, at this point. So, but, uh, all right, right. I mean, that's uh, even like, that actually fits in Rav Nachum's little, little kind of categorization yeah. really nicely as, as like, even more than just Rashuda Rabim is like Rashuda Rabim, but I don't even touch it. Right. Mm -hmm. I just say something so, to someone else about it. So beautiful. It's, uh... All right. Since we have we have like a minute left, we're not going to get into Shtaron, unfortunately, today. But I wanted to just look at uh, Mishnah Hay, which has not just a um, uh, parallel. Um, and um, this is the third category that the Meiri brings up. We've done kind of the first two at this point. Uh, and the third one is uh, the Mitziot of Beno Vito. Uh, I'll read it. Why not? Mitziat Beno Vito Ktanim, Mitziat Abdo Shifchato Knanim, Mitziat Ishto Har Elu Shalo, Mitziat Beno Vito Agdolim, Mitziat Abdo Shifchato Haivrim, Mitziat Ishto Shegarsha, Afal Pi Shalo Natan Ktubata, Mitziat Ishto Shegarsha, Afal Pi Shalo Natan Ktubata. Right. So this is right. If you're your children who are still minors, or you have an Evid Kanani, um, or you have a woman that you're are still married to, uh, those if they find something, it goes to you. Uh, but if they are no longer, you know, uh, minors, or they're they're not they're Jewish fully Jewish slaves, as opposed to like you know the Evid Kanani was like a partial Jew. Or it, it is like a really fascinating piece, I think, at the end here, right? Um, a woman who you've divorced, you've given a get to, but you haven't paid off the, uh, the ketubah yet. Um, you might think that there's, and there are in some halachic still connections between the two. It's not a fully, it, it's fully separated in some ways, but not in others. Um, those, nonetheless, those people get to keep um, their, um, uh, even though they're, they're in categories you may see, or well, they're quasi, you know, kind of subservient to you. Uh, nonetheless, they get to keep their own metziot and you don't get to be um, zochet them. So, okay. Any final thoughts on that Mishnah before? I think that that one felt fairly straightforward to me. I'm sure we can make a lot out of it, but uh, um, so um, I think with that, you know, I'm out of time. <laughs> so uh, I apologize for not getting to everything because I think the stuff about Shtarot is really good. Um, but uh, um, nice job. hopefully, very nice. Yeah, we'll see Fascinating shit. Yeah. What's up for next week? Um, Next week, somebody asked, next week, uh, we are going to do the Mishnah, uh, the first Mishnah again, but with the Tosfot. With the, there's a um, couple, there's three Tosfot. I'm not sure if we'll do the first one. You should read the first. I'm not sure if we'll do it in class, but this, we'll do a few Tosfot on the first Mishnah. I think that might just take up all the time uh, of this year. I'll send out sources uh, for helping to understand this, especially the second Tosfot. Um, but you can already get started. All right, looking forward. So, thanks, Rav Nachum. Yeah. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. Sure. Be well. Bye, 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 Bye. Bye. Bye.